Hi, welcome to our social media boot camp. My name is Rita Cartwright Southern, and I am the owner of RJ's Internet Marketing Solutions. We'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to attend our boot camp. We will be discussing four modules today in our boot camp, and those include module number one is find your tribe, and the next module, module two, is build the foundation. Module three, we will discuss plan your content, and module number four is engage your followers. And so we're going to dive right in, beginning with module number one. And the learning objective for this module is choose the right platform to find a hungry, responsive community. Being active on all social media platforms might seem like a wonderful plan, but it is unnecessary and counterproductive. It's inefficient, exhausting, and usually ends up with you spread too thin. Better to find out which specific social platforms your ideal tribe operates within and concentrate your efforts there. There are three ways to go about this so that you do not make any incorrect assumptions nor miss a potentially powerful social group. And those three ways include checking social platform stats and demographics, checking out your competitor's social media presence, and checking out Facebook and our LinkedIn groups. Only when you have done this homework should you then select the top one to three platforms that are most responsive and concentrate the majority of your social media networking on those limited platforms. Before taking a look at how to make a choice, let's quickly recap the main social media platforms that can help you build your ideal responsive community. Step number one of find your tribe, what social platforms am I missing? Top networks like Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest number users in multiple millions. YouTube exceeds them at 1.5 billion, and Mark Zuckerberg announced at the end of June 2017 that Facebook topped 2 billion users. But just how relevant is this data to you? With user numbers at huge magnitudes for each platform, won't you get lost in a crowd, kind of like a grain of sand in an ocean? Yes, unless you are highly specific in identifying the right potential audience member types and targeting so that they find you. Once you have identified them, start hanging out online with them and sharing carefully targeted but authentic content, interesting specific posts, infographics, image quotes, polls, inspirational posts, selective personal posts, videos, and the like. So they will not only be able to recognize who you are and what you're all about, but also look forward to your presence too. It's not just about the numbers. If you check the stats on various platforms, you'll quickly find out that each platform attracts different demographics. For instance, Instagram tends to attract younger women. Pinterest is nearly all female, but attracts older women than Instagram. Twitter is going after business these days, as well as being a favorite of authors of all shapes and sizes. And YouTube is a whole different story, being segmented quite specifically. So we're going to continue our boot camp and take a look at Module 2, Build the Foundation. And the learning objective for this module is get a quick but accurate grounding in the top social networks. Now this module will help you set up your chosen platforms for success right from the start or rework the ones you already have for better results. We'll focus on what's working the best for growing your reach and retaining a healthy, active community in social media today, keeping in mind that social networks are always in a state of flux, as we mentioned in the last module, thanks to the wildfire na uh, nature of technology. 
So step one in module two, we'll take a look at Facebook groups. Facebook groups are immensely powerful when it comes to building and maintaining a healthy community. Facebook groups are all about conversations. They're about shared specialty interests. They are all about support, helping, and growing. But most of all, they are all about moving towards shared goals. There are two ways to make use of Facebook groups in growing your social reach, belonging to groups, and creating and running your own group. There are so many groups on Facebook. It should never be just a matter of finding one or creating one that caters to your chosen topic or sub-niche. But be selective and use the following criteria, excuse me, criteria when finding the right group, the one that is perfect for you. Number one, what is the purpose of the group? Is it just a place for people who love something? For example, chocolate, drama, cooking, Herdwick sheep to hang out in? Or is it a group that exists to help people improve a skill or learn something new? Is it a support group? For people with a common affliction, for people attempting to master a discipline such as writing? Is it a testing group where people can try things out on each other? For example, a beta reading group. Know the purpose that is most important to you and to those you wish to interact with in a Facebook group before you blithely just join one. And number two, what tone are you looking for or looking to create? Is this a let your hair down group? Is it a group of serious business minded professionals who don't want to indulge in much personal chat? Is it nurturing, a safe group for those dealing with trauma or illness? Is it a group for people with lightning fast minds who want to fast track something? Whatever the tone is, you need to either join a group that already has it or create the tone right from the beginning in your own group. And one tip, finding a group with the tone that makes you feel most comfortable can give you a major clue about the tone your community wants too when it's time to create your own group. And number three, what is the group for? First of all, if you're joining a group, what are you in it for? What do you want to achieve there? What are you looking for? What don't you want in this group? Answer these questions and you have advanced far along the path of determining who the group is for. Someone who is very likely your own ideal client. And number four, is this group really for you? Joining a few groups before settling on one to three to concentrate on is a good way to check your own assumptions. Do you like the tone in one particular group better than another? Is there something about another group that rubs you the wrong way? Taking the time to interact with a few selected groups is a great way to research the best way to make groups, your own and others, work best for you. And what is the come and go? Are groups all groups need to have a goal. If you have a problem identifying what the goal of a particular group is, read the guidelines or rules in the description. If it's not stated there, chances are the group is not focused enough and you have a potential minefield of diversity and disagreement with different folks there for different purposes and goals. If it's your own group and you have and you are having trouble uh, defining a purpose, think mission statement instead. What do you want for every member of the group? What do you want your group to do for you? Selling my products is, is not the answer. That just happened to be a byproduct. If your goal is totally self-serving, you may have problems keeping people in your tribe. You need to make sure you can answer the question that each one will also be asking. What will I get out of this? A group whose goal is for everyone to create their own professional, powerful website would be more harmonious, helpful, responsive, and focused than one who merely say it is for people who like web design. A group whose aim is for everyone to overcome shyness in public speaking is more likely to have this successful outcome that will bring you recognition than a group for people who are introverts.
and we will continue with module three, uh, plan your content. And the learning objective for this module is making content creation intuitive and easy for social networks. The best social media content is targeted to a specific audience while providing a mix of live and pre-scheduled posts, as well as original and curated content. The best social media content doesn't make the mistake of ignoring other relevant experts and influencers, but engages with them and when relevant, promotes other experts. The most effective social media content is planned in advance to make sure that a regular consistent flow of posts shows up in each platform. It is tested and analyzed and cross-promoted across more than one network. And step number one of plan your content, platform strength. So what content performs best on different platforms? First, we'll take a look at Facebook. Facebook is the perfect platform to maintain daily community building and interaction. It can grow conversations, present new ideas, conduct form, informal research, and grow your reach. Group topics are searchable, but fees are not. And posts stay prominent as long as there is new activity on them. Ads are immediate and short term. Facebook loves images and different content types. For example, infographics, photos, image quotes, quizzes, polls, and surveys. Facebook groups love these too, but you can add polls to the mix without having to go through a third party app. Most of all, at the time of putting this uh, bootcamp together, Facebook loves live stream and raw video the most. The latter being video uploaded directly uh, to Facebook rather than via link. For example, if you upload it over to YouTube and you copy the link and you want to share it over Facebook, it prefers the raw video um, as opposed to the link. So go ahead and um, uh, uh, upload your video directly to Facebook. And it's the perfect place for ongoing discussion and relationship building. Next, we'll take a look at Twitter. Twitter is even more immediate than Facebook. Once a tweet is out of sight, it is usually out of mind. The real key to Twitter's success is to have a specific goal and focus all your tweets on that particular goal, whether it's on band, uh, excuse me, brand building, establishing yourself as an author, showing yourself as a coaching authority, or whatever. It's best used uh, for anything that promotes that goal. But don't make the mistake of endlessly driving links to your products and articles only. Find other things to tweet about that are consistent with your image. Twitter is a powerhouse for hashtags too. Using the right hashtag can provide an instant connection with influencers. It can reinforce your image and brand. It can reach the right audience and stop you from getting lost in the crowd. Find out and take advantage of hashtag that influencers uh, in your niche use. Making sure, of course, that you are not impinging on a personal hashtag search such as their brand hashtags, okay? Digital marketer and author Kim Garst offers great pointers on finding powerful hashtags. That's her banner that you see on your monitor. Twitter is also great for reinforcing messages on other social media and for creating quick focus reminders. For example, asking people to share the news that a webinar is starting or that it is the last day to register for a class. You can also create a pinned tweet so that it is the first thing seen by new people who decide to follow you. And next, We'll take a look at module four. The topic is engage your followers. And this is the final uh, module in our bootcamp. And the learning objectives for this module, engage your followers, increase your engagement with followers the natural way. It's not enough to just have a presence on the top sites. It's not even enough to post consistently good content. 
People do business with those they know, like, and trust. And those relationships are built one conversation at a time. Step number one, the power of five-day challenges. Challenges have always been a good way uh, to hook in a responsive audience. They are finite and time limited. They offer a specific desirable reward. There's the built-in twin elements of teamwork and competition. They can be fun. Five-day challenges are particularly appealing because they feel easily attainable. People love parameters, especially the sort that promise minimal investment and maximum results and tell you exactly when something begins and ends. That's appealing in this day and age of overwhelm. Five-day challenges are easy to plan and set up, and they make great beta tests if you're planning a longer paid challenge. Call it a mini-challenge mini or a five-day challenge. And how to plan your challenge? Start with the problem that needs solving and start with a specific goal and reward. Your goal has to be specific and concrete as well as desirable. Lose five pounds in five days is decidedly more appealing than lose weight in five days. What is your challenge promise? Five pounds taken off. How long? Five days. Simple. Your challenge will work even better if the problem separating your participants from the goal is one they've been trying unsuccessfully to attain for some time on their own. Keep it simple as possible. For example, a challenge to post one image quote per day for five days could be challenge enough to a group of new marketers. Or for a group of writers, a challenge to post 500 words a day. The real key is tapping into your group's current need, showing them what they need to do, and reassuring them they can easily do it in bite-sized chunks. What you have to create is a blog post detailing the challenge, a Facebook post detailing the challenge, a sign-up page, a thank-you page, a Facebook group if you don't already have one, and more items that you have to create, three promotional emails for your list, telling them about the challenge, information, and pointing out the benefits of the challenge. That would be the emotion. And reminding them to join. And you need to create a daily live stream uh, script for yourself and add contents. We'd like to take this opportunity to once again to thank you for attending our boot camp and for actually signing up, making an investment in yourself, in your business, and in your social media marketing. For more information about our company, about our services, or about myself, please visit our website at www.rjs internetmarketing.com and be sure to include the HTTPS so that you can visit our website securely and you can also contact us toll free at 866-651-3073 or locally at 602-454-9408. Once again, thank you very much and may God bless your business endeavors.